Denise Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, October 13th. Okay, so we have a super busy day in the cosmos here today. We are going to be overwhelmed with energy shifts, not trying to be a negative Nancy, just telling you how it is. There are 17 aspects popping off here today. It is a major day in the cosmos. We have a lot of things going on. Out of those 17, we are going to see 10 of those involve the moon, which of course the moon today still in this Aquarius energy until 10, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to see the moon go void, of course. And then at 3.56 p.m., we are going to shift into Pisces energy. So first, let me just kind of briefly talk about that transition and then we'll get into it. The Aquarius energy allows us to be emotionally detached so that we can act as the observer. We're all up in the headspace. We're trying to think about our futuristic wants, needs, and desires. And in that particular thought process, we're starting to realize where it is that there's blockages and challenges in our present moment, either mentally, emotionally, maybe even physically. We're starting to problem solve. We're starting to strategize, if you will, and we're starting to see the greater, grander picture. When we shift into the Pisces energy, which is the last sign of the Zodiac, a mutable water sign at that, it means that we're moving out of the head space, we're moving down into the heart space. There's always emotions that come up when we're in a water sign. The mutability of Pisces means that we're about to see a major change in our heart space, especially based off of the realizations of our futuristic wants, needs, and visions that we just kind of realized in the Aquarius energy. Now we have to kind of change our emotions, change our inner realm to match what we know we need to get in alignment with in order to actually close the door on the past. Again, Pisces energy, we're wrapping up a cycle, especially where emotions are concerned. We are wrapping up a particular cycle in preparation for a new cycle to begin. So of course, there's going to be a lot of emotion. We kind of move out of the headspace. We move all into the heart space. Our intuition comes online. We are a little bit challenged, I would say, with kind of shifting our mental plane, shifting our heart space to kind of see where it is that again, we've been holding on to the old that no longer serves us. There is a challenge there. But over the next course of the couple of days that the moon is in this Pisces energy, we're going to have some revelations of the heart, we're going to be downloaded with visions, we're going to be refreshed and renewed in our soul in our spirit. And we're definitely going to see where it is that naturally, organically, there are emotions coming to an end. So we have that going on. Now, outside of that, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. We have Mercury moving into Scorpio energy. We've been in this Libra energy, teeter tottering back and forth, coming to no kinds of decisions. We are going to be shifting into the fixed water sign of Scorpio. There is an astro forecast out there for your listening pleasure. Of course, download your October energy guide for your zodiac sign in order to know where this particular energy is going to be impacting your life the most. And I'm also going to recommend that you listen to the Ascension forecast for this week. We have a pretty intense week on our hands and you definitely want to stay ahead of the game. So before I jump into all the different aspects here today, again, 17 of them, uh, let me also just kind of point out an interesting observation that I made. First of all, the heart space, the moon that represents our heart space, our emotions, our unconscious self, our intuition, we start off in an air sign, we're going to be shifting into a water sign. Same with the headspace. That's where Mercury rules over. We start off the day in an air sign. We end the day off with a water sign. So there's definitely going to be a major shift in our mood and our attitude and our focus and our thoughts and our ideas. And again, that water energy is supposed to cleanse us and purify us, kind of lighten the load, the funk, the gunk from the previous couple of days, and then start to refresh and renew our soul and our spirit. So there's definitely going to be highs and lows and everything in between here today, major, major day in the cosmos. So Let's jump into it. 
While the moon is still very much in this Aquarius energy, we are going to make a very harsh interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in cancer energy. Again, we're kind of in preservation mode. We're kind of attached to, let's call it the past in an element of, you know, we're trying to figure out what is working for us, what isn't. The aspects that are working for us, we're doubling down on that. We're holding on to those with a little bit of a death grip. And of course, Mars, he doesn't enjoy being in this cancer energy because he can't go directly after what it is that he wants, what his new passions and desires are. He kind of has to act like the crab, so to speak, and kind of shuffle sideways, taking a little bit of detour, if you will, to where it is that we want to end up. Now, of course, this is not a nice aspect at all. And this is really going to highlight for us where it is that we do feel the restlessness. We do feel the ants in our pants. We are feeling a little bit, I'm going to say, semi-defensive and protective, if you will. And there's a lot of anger and frustration coming up just because, again, the moon in Aquarius has a vision in which we would like to end up in. But Mars, in this present moment, not a lot of option, not a lot of opportunity to take any kind of moves or make any kind of actions towards this new vision that, of course, we want to definitely manifest. So the moon goes ahead and sextiles beautiful interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who was retrograde in Aries energy. Now Mars rules over that Aries energy. For, so lucky for us, we get this air energy from Aquarius. We get this fire energy from Aries, and that is going to spark an idea, spark a creative solution, spark something within us to realize where it is that there are parts of self that still need to grow, still need to heal, still need to be nurtured to a place of health and wellness before we're going to see ourselves end up at that goal, at that dream, at that vision. So emotionally speaking, we're kind of examining ourselves, especially this new version of self. We're starting to identify what we could do better, where it is that we can improve certain, you know, mental health issues or emotional issues or just simply perspectives in our dialogues. The moon is going to try and beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings, who, of course, now is retrograde in Gemini energy. A trine means that we're working with like elements, the air energy of Aquarius, the air energy of Gemini, they're coming together, we're all up in the headspace, we're trying to weigh the pros and cons of what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire, what we have control and power over in this present moment to actually do to help us grow, to help us expand upon some of the things that are working. Jupiter, because he is kind of the hype girl of the Zodiac, is bringing a lot of optimism, a lot of confidence in. We're starting to feel pretty good about the options and opportunities that we have to integrate some of the life lessons, the harsh, tough love life lessons that we've already learned into this present moment, preventing us from repeating past patterns, past behaviors, and preventing us from making the same mistakes again. The moon in Aquarius then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with the north node in Aries energy. So the north node wants to get us on the right path, wants us to grow, wants us to evolve, wants us to align with a new mission and a new purpose. And although the moon in Aquarius is very futuristically focused and really does want to kind of start manifesting the elements, the aspects that, of course, we want to arrive at sooner than later, a semi-square is highlighting where it is that we're having some growing pains. And the growing pains that we're currently experiencing, it's not that we don't know what you know, area of our life needs a little bit more time, energy and attention. It's not that we aren't realizing where there are conflicts, where there are things out of balance. We are still in labor season, mind you. Um, we know all that. It's just that as far as what the plan, what the strategy is, uh, what the solution could be, that is where we're not quite clear. And so, yeah, it's great to think about, you know, where we want to end up. But how do we get there? This is, again, the lack of clarity that we're still kind of experiencing due to still being under the eclipse energies. This is where we're struggling to come up with the details, the information needed in order to kind of strategize the plan, the solution to actually move on and move forward. 
the sun in Libra energy going to make a beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. So Libra energy, Taurus energy, what did they have in common? Venus rules over both of them. And of course, Venus is in the tail end of her transit in Scorpio energy, doing a deep dive in her heart space, recognizing who and what needs to stay, needs to go. She's building herself up. This is an empowerment energy in order for her to realize that she wants more, she deserves more, and she actually feels like she's worthy of more. And of course, in that realization, we're figuring out, again, who and what we need to let go of. So the sun shining a bright light in this Libra energy, of course, is trying to illuminate where it is that we're still trying to strike a balance, try, trying to find peace and harmony, not only within ourselves, between our heart and our head, not only in certain areas of our lives that, of course, have gotten crazy and chaotic and out of whack, but illuminating relationship dynamics as well. Now, Uranus, on the other hand, the great awakener, he is retrograde, meaning this is an internalized energy, taking a good look inside of ourselves to see where it is that we're still holding on desperately to things that we know that we've outgrown, that are not serving us, that are not giving us any worth or value in our lives, but yet we just can't seem to let go. So we love this energy because it is a positive aspect, which means that the sun shining very brightly on this new aha moment, on this new epiphany, on this new perspective that is going to help us again see where it is that we're essentially the problem, we're blocking the progress here. Our inability to let go of certain people, places, and things is slowing up the past, so to speak, in order to bring peace and harmony back into our present day moment. Now, 708 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, things are going to start getting a little bit bumpy. Okay, so we start off with the moon in Aquarius energy, getting into the boxing ring, squaring off, fighting it out with Venus. We just talked about Miss Venus. Venus is in Scorpio energy. Aquarius energy and Scorpio energy are fixed signs. The fixed energies, although are helping us to stabilize, they are also putting us in a situation where we're resisting the changes that we know that we need to make. So emotionally speaking, the moon in Aquarius energy, again, super hyped up about this futuristic goal and vision that we would love to see manifest. Venus over here doing all of the shadow work and Scorpio energy, again, figuring out what it is that she truly wants, needs and desires. And in that perspective, realizing where it is that she's been selling herself short selling for situations and circumstances that are technically beneath her. And because she's doing the empowerment work, the self-love work, she knows she's worthy and deserving of more. And when we have that particular realization, then we have to do the hard things, which are cutting certain people and things out of our lives. But right now, there's a heaviness, there's a weight. We, we know what we have to do, but we're not ready to do it. Again, resisting the changes that we know that we need to make. A square illuminates the growing pains. And emotionally speaking, although we're very happy to lose ourselves in the imaginary land of our futuristic vision that we actually want to be living in, what we have to do to actually get there, that is where we're finding ourselves in a state of paralysis. At 10 a.m., again, Eastern Standard Time, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is going to be at the final degrees of this Libra energy. And what do we also find at a final degree? Oh, yeah, that's right. Pluto. Pluto, Mr. Great Transformer himself, he is sitting at the 29th critical crisis degree of Capricorn energy. And we already know that Libra energy and Capricorn energy, they have a hard time getting along. They're the furthest elements away. And of course, the light and fluffy vibes of Libra energy, just wanting everybody to be happy and everything wanting to stay in the shallow end. We have Capricorn energy who, realistically speaking, has a hard time staying in the light and fluffy vibes, the light and fluffy area. What we're doing is we're having Mercury and Pluto come into the boxing ring and they are about to fight it out. So again, the square highlights growing pains. Mercury and Pluto, they are going to kind of trigger a lot of paranoia, a lot of dark thoughts, a lot of inner narratives that are not even based out of reality and honestly creating a lot more anxiety than we need 
to be in. This is really going to throw our minds for a loop, throw our thought processes in a knot. And yes, we're definitely going to be overthinking things to an, uh, an absolute insane degree. And although there may be this want, need and desire to kind of get our message out there to truly express ourselves, we almost need other people to agree with us. We need other people to get on our side. And the fact that it's not going to be well received, the fact that, you know, whatever information we're trying to express is not going to come out the way that we had hoped and definitely not going to be received by the people that we want to really kind of hear us and stand with us. This is definitely going to trigger and activate a lot of fear, a lot of insecurity. Now, this has a lot to do with the fact that we feel like we're being kind of, I'm going to say, restricted from the information, from the details that we need. It almost even in relationship dynamics, of course, we are still in labor season, may feel like there are people purposely trying to keep things from us. And especially if we're having a little bit of conflict with certain people that aren't really seeing our views and aren't really listening to us and, you know, all of that thing, the major disrespect that we're going to feel is also going to trigger and activate certain wounds, certain fears and insecurities within us. So we really should try to kind of avoid this communication style, this want, need and desire to speak our truth and to be seen and be heard. Because realistically speaking, we're not going to articulate it correctly. It's not going to be well received. And we're setting ourselves up for a fight, basically. Our opinions are not going to be on the same page with the people that we thought we were on the same page with. And God forbid there's skepticism. God forbid there's criticism coming at us. We are going to lose our shit. So again, paranoia is definitely a thing. Obsessive thinking is definitely a thing. We are overly self-aware and that's actually to a detriment. We're picking ourselves and the people in the world around us apart. And at this particular juncture, again, right before Mercury is about to move into Scorpio energy, it just feels like the scales have been tipped all the way to an extreme and definitely not in our favor. So 11 minutes later, 10, 11 a.m., the moon in Aquarius energy is going to get into the boxing ring Fight it out with Uranus. Uranus rules over this Aquarius energy. So we're kind of coming in contact with the rulership. And of course, it's not going to be good. It's a square. Uranus being retrograde in this Taurus energy. Again, we're getting into the boxing ring. We're realizing the growing pains between where it is that we're at and where it is that we want to be. Even more than that, where it is that we're coming from in order to get where we're at and where it is that we're currently at and how the hell are we going to come up with the plan and the strategy to get us to where it is that we desire to be. Again, Uranus being retrograde in the Taurus energy is supposed to be illuminating for us where it is that again, we're holding on to the past for dear life. The moon in Aquarius needs us to release all attachments, again, acting as the observer, not being so present and rooted in our physical bodies, in our physical form, and connected to the physical environment in which we've created. So this is going to create a lot of confusion, especially around the plan, the strategy on how we're going to get ourselves out of this situation and into a better situation, more in alignment with where it is that we desire to be. So... This is when the moon goes void, of course. And when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable. And having those three squares back to back leading up to this, you know, moon going void, it's not going to feel good. OK, so we sit in this energy for about an hour, 1110 a.m. The moon in Aquarius, while void, is going to make a little bit of a positive interaction with Mars. So Mars in this particular energy, because it's not a negative aspect, Mars is like, OK, let's get damn well determined to kind of figure this out. Let's get focused. Let's really take a good look at what I'm passionate about, what I know I need to see happen. Let's take a good look at what I actually have passion power and control over in this present moment as far as action is concerned. Let's just see where it is that I need to stabilize in my emotional realm before I go ahead and just absolutely lose my shit. So this is again kind of realizing where it is that we want to end up, realizing the gap 
between where it is that we're at and where it is that we want to be. And then Mars kind of kicking in and saying, okay, let's cool things down a tad. Let's kind of, you know, anchor ourselves in a tad and let's put the tunnel vision goggles on so that we can focus on one thing at a time, especially the things that are working, the things that we actually have power and control over. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, retrograde and Pisces energy. This is going to illuminate for us where it is that, again, we're tapping into our higher selves. We're tapping into our intuition. And we're really trying to remind ourselves of the goal, the vision, the dream that we feel emotionally and intuitively connected to pursue. This is likely going to pull us out of reality, push us into la-la land, and again, give us a little bit of a chance to have that vision, again, acting as the observer, the vision of where it is that we would want to end up. And again, really paying attention to the emotions coming up when we're thinking about this imaginary goal and vision that, again, we're very excited to pursue. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, who's now direct in Capricorn energy, because again, the moon is at the final degrees here of this Aquarius energy. So this means that we're getting a grip. We're getting a grip on our mental plane. We're getting a grip on our emotions. We are a little bit more anchored in reality than we were earlier in the day. And this is going to put us in a boss up situation. We realize what needs to change, especially with our mental plane and our heart space. We need the heart and head to get in alignment before we can take action and make moves. But we're specifically looking at the aspects of the old world, the old version of self that are still alive and well, that, of course, are blocking our past and moving forward. We are realizing the aspects when we allow ourselves to think about the futuristic vision that we want to find ourselves in. We're realizing what in our present day moment needs to go in order for us to actually get there. 324 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mercury moves into Scorpio energy. So again, there's an astro forecast. Again, get out your e-guide for October. And if you're on my Patreon, definitely take a look at the new posts that I'm putting up in order to understand how to work with these energies. We have Mercury moving into the Scorpio energy. Again, 324 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 56 p.m. The moon shifts into Pisces energy. So this is where, again, the headspace Mercury moved out of an air energy into a water sign and where the moon, again, our heart space moved out of an air energy and into a water sign. This is the peak where we're definitely going to see a major shift in our mood and our attitude. Here is a very kawinky dinky type of thing. 3.59 p.m., the moon, fresh in this Pisces energy, is going to trine beautiful interaction with Mercury, fresh in the Scorpio energy. So this is our heart and our head working together for growth, for healing, for evolvement. And a trine means that we're working with like-minded elements. This is water on water action. Water purifies us, water cleanses us, it calms us down, then it refreshes us, then it renews us in our emotional realm, in our intuition, in our imagination, in our creativity. This is our heart and our head understanding what needs to be washed away, what we have to remove, what we have to release in order for us to start focusing on the things that we want to start building towards. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger is going to get into the boxing ring and square off with Chiron. So let me just kind of say this. We are moving into a T square, which is a tension point. And the sun is going to be involved. Mars is going to be involved. Chiron is going to be involved. Of course, the sun in Libra energy sitting across the street from the Aries energy that Chiron is retrograde in. And then when you kind of, you know, draw that line across, in the chart and in the zodiac wheel and then you draw a line downwards that's where we find mars in cancer energy so i know that that's a little bit of like an astrology lesson here in you know this little forecast but i'm just setting this up because it is going to bleed into monday morning as well so we start off with mars and chiron they're getting into the boxing ring they're fighting it out 
A square highlights the growing pains that we're going through. Again, there's a lot of restless. There's a lot of fears. There's a lot of insecurities. There's a lot of protection, a lot of defense mechanisms coming out with Mars being in this cancer energy. Chiron, on the other hand, the wounded healer who is currently retrograde in Aries energy is helping us to examine our mental health, our emotional wounds, our circumstances that are creating a little bit of pain and trauma. And we're starting to figure out again what we have to fix and heal and grow and repair within us in order to actually get out of this funk and move a little bit closer to where it is that we desire to be. So keep that in mind, because then Mars goes ahead and makes a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, who of course is now retrograde in this Gemini energy. So that square that we just sat in, that is going to be a profound realization. OK, the reason why I know that is because Jupiter wants us to grow, wants us to heal, wants us to expand, wants us to integrate the wisdom, the knowledge that we've learned through the tough love life lessons that we've already had to go through, already had to learn the hard way. We need to expand our mind about it. And so Mars and Jupiter, there's going to be a motivational determination shift here. Do we have a different mood, a different attitude? We understand what we have to defend and protect, what, especially with what it is that we've already built and created. We have to understand what we're willing to fight for as far as new wants, needs, desires go. Jupiter is magnifying where it is that, again, we're pushing the boundaries of our mental plane. We're expanding upon our understanding because, of course, he's retrograde in Gemini energy, reviewing and reflecting what it is that we've already learned that we have to integrate into this present moment. We then have the sun in Libra energy sitting across from directly opposing Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. Again, this is the T square that I previously mentioned. So, of course, the sun shining a bright light in Libra energy is illuminating where it is that we have to find peace, harmony, and balance, either within ourselves, between our heart and our head, between us and the outer realm, or specifically an area of life or a specific relationship. You best believe that this T square, this tension point, is illuminating all of the wounds. We are picking all of the scabs off of all of the wounds that have been healing and we are exposing them to the air once again this is definitely going to have us questioning this new version of self there is going to be this want need and desire to revert back to the default ego programming where we get triggered where we get activated where we react like a toddler where we throw a little bit of a tantrum okay so there is this tension point we're definitely sitting in the fears, doubts, and insecurities that we're having about ourselves, that we're having about these new wants, needs, and desires, that we're having about the list of to-do things that we're going to have to address before we can, again, move on. So the last thing that we have going on here today is that the sun in Libra energy is then going to trine, which is a beautiful interaction with Jupiter. So Jupiter's bringing the hype back, bringing the optimism back, bringing our ability to see where it is that we have an opportunity to grow and heal and evolve basically by taking a good look at our tantrum ass selves and realizing where it is that we could do things differently, where we could behave differently, where we could take different actions compared to how we would have reacted did, you know, even two weeks ago, this is a realization. Again, the sun shining very brightly on where it is that the scales are so out of whack. And in this case, we're very trapped in the fears, the doubts, the insecurities of who it is that we currently are and what it is that we need to do and how it is that we're going to plan and strategize to get there. Jupiter is magnifying where it is that again, he's retrograde in Gemini energy, where a shift in our mental plane is needed, where we know better, but we're failing to do better, where it is that again, this trine is air on air action, and where it is that we have to get a grip in our inner realm, in our inner narrative, on our perspectives, on our ideas, on our thoughts, on our opinions, on the information that we have within ourselves that we're refusing to integrate. And when we kind of, you know, push comes to shove, we are going to realize where it is that, again, we got to get out of our own damn way and really bring peace, harmony and balance back to our mental plane. <laughs> <laughs>